and for reasons to hope for the soon coming rapture of the church. We're really looking for reasons to hope that it is soon. And looking now at Hanukkah and Enoch. This is from Sister Lisa's article from several years ago, but she made some great points. The plain meaning of the word Hanukkah means dedication in Hebrew. Coincidentally, the name Enoch also means dedicated and is derived from the same Hebrew word, word, root word, used for the word Hanukkah. They even sound similar. So the Feast of Dedication or Hanukkah can be called the Feast of Enoch. This is exciting since Enoch was translated into heaven solely because of his faith. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. If Enoch's rapture is a pattern for those who are to be raptured later then this then perhaps his name provides a clue as to the timing of the rapture this is an, just a, an interesting point here about the name Enoch now Hanukkah means dedication the Hebrew word Hanak, Hanukkah means dedication and this holiday commemorates the rededication of the holy temple and even as we think about that the temple, the bodies of the saints who've been cleansed by the blood of Christ and the Holy Spirit is coming to their heart. Their bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and they'd be dedicated, they'd be presented in the throne room at the rapture. Hallelujah. So even as we think about that Hanukkah, Hanukkah means dedication it's a redo of the feast of tabernacles and this one is Enoch what does Enoch mean Enoch meaning you can google that what does Enoch mean means dedicated trained dis disciple Enoch is a boy's name of Hebrew origin meaning dedicated so we do see that Hanukkah and Enoch are the same uh, root word and here is Enoch, Hanok, Hanok, derived from the root Hanok, meaning to dedicate or to initiate. So the Hanukkah is the, can we be considered the feast of Enoch? And this is uh, from Brother Steve here, shared what uh, uh, Chuck Missler had shared some about this, about what is uh, Hanukkah. We'll look at, listen to this one. Because they're a spontaneous revolt occurs. Um, there's a, a bunch of officers arrived to carry out Antiochus' decrees at the village of Modain, where an aged priest named Mathathias lived with his five sons. Mathathias was a devout Jew, obviously. He immediately killed the first Jew that approached the pagan altar to offer the sacrifice, and he also killed the royal official who presided. And he and his sons, he and his five sons, obviously... <laughs> fled to the hills because they now were fugitives. Now this little spontaneous incident gets blossoms into a full-scale war. His five sons were, of course, the nucleus of these gang of rebels. The five sons were John, Simon, Judas, Eleazar, and Jonathan. They had nicknames. Judas's nickname that was Gadai, Thassai, Maccabeus, and Averon, and Apis. But the leader, it's clear that Judas of these five sons was had great military aptitude and skills. His nickname happened to be Maccabeus, the hammer. Gives you some idea of his athletic prowess that he apparently earned before all this happened. But he then becomes the leader of this revolt. And the revolt in general are then known as the Maccabeans after Judas's nickname. Their last name really had to do with Hasmoneans. You, some people can't link up. Why, what, why did the Maccabean revolt, which was successful, lead to the Hasmoneans? That was the family name. The Maccabean is a nickname of Judas, who was the, the big leader here at the time. Matthias, the aged priest, soon died after they're leaving the leadership in the hands of Judas. And uh, so he, he was a brilliant, brilliant guy. And this guerrilla war then uh, 
turned into full military engagements, and they managed to defeat the more powerful Syrian armies. They actually threw off the yoke of the Seleucid Empire, and that leads to what's called the Hasmonean period. He did a lot of things. He captured Jerusalem. He uh, rededicated the temple. It took three years. It's the third year on the anniversary of its desecration that they rededicate the temple on the 25th of Kislev. And that is honored by the Jewish community every 25th of Kislev since then. It's called Hanukkah. We always associate Hanukkah with the colorful legends that surround. Just it's analogous to talking about Santa Claus and Christmas in a sense. They have some colorful legends about Hanukkah. But set that aside for the moment. The real issue is they're celebrating the rededication of the temple. And, uh, uh, and it's, it's authorized in the New Testament, by the way. In John chapter 10, verse 22, the New Testament makes allusion to Hanukkah. I think the Holy Spirit did that to make you do your homework on this background. So as we think about Hanukkah, and this brother Daniel here, he's he's got his heart set on December 17th and 18th as being the Hanukkah rapture on the calendar he's using. I haven't followed his calendar, his thinking. He's uh, confident of that, just to say that's in Blow the Shofar channel. And uh, I will say only God knows for sure. I do not know for sure. Only God knows. But Hanukkah does start on December 25th, Christmas Day. Christmas Day in the evening up through January 2nd is uh, the dates for Hanukkah, the way the Jewish uh, calendar is counting it. And uh, this is a story foretold with the, the rapture of the church is on Hanukkah. He says, no, I do not know that for sure. He's more confident than I am about the date. But it is interesting because in John chapter 10, which uh, Chuck Missler alluded to, where Jesus talked about the shepherd. He said, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Uh, in this passage where Jesus said, no man can pluck them out of my father's hands, Jesus used the word, aparzo, the same word, seven two strong, seven two six, the 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 word from harpazo. No, and he mentioned that word twice in this chapter. The same chapter where he celebrated the Feast of Dedication in John chapter 10, verse 22. So that's interesting. Uh, and so Jesus and the Feast of Dedication, uh, although Hanukkah is not one of the seven feasts of the Lord described in Leviticus 23, it is specifically mentioned in the Bible as being observed by Jesus. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Now this word pluck here, as I showed you, in this uh, this is the strong 726, Arpazo. So this is uh, the word that Jesus used in John 10 twice. I just thought that was interesting, could be a clue. So the Lord bless you. This is part one of uh, why we're hoping here for Hanukkah, Christmas, rapture. Not that we're sure, only God knows for sure, uh, but we're just watching dates. And Jesus said, watch and be ready for you know not the hour that the Lord comes, but we'll be ready. And I love Luke chapter 12, verse 41. He says, Blessed are the servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them sit down to meet and serve them. There is great blessing to those who are watching. So as we're considering these things, let's celebrate with a song. Cheer up, ye saints of God, there's nothing to worry about, nothing to make you fear or dread, nothing to make you doubt. Remember Christ our Savior reigns, so why not trust him and shout? You'll be sorry you buried it all tomorrow morning. 
Cheer up, ye saints of God, there's nothing to worry about, nothing to make you fear or dread, nothing to make you doubt. Remember Christ our Savior reigns, so why not trust him and shout? You'll be sorry you're worried at all tomorrow morning. The Lord bless you all. Jesus Christ is the King, and he is coming soon. We don't know the day and the hour, but we're watching today and tomorrow. And we've got a special site on Hanukkah. Hanuk, which means dedicated. Time for to dedicate the temple that has, belongs to the Lord to dedicate the temple in the throne room. The Lord bless you all. Check this website, he died for you.com. Share it with others. Jesus saves. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans chapter 9, verse 9 and 10. God bless you all.